Welcome everyone, Bochem Abayim, Tuesday night, a weekly shiur, and tonight we have a special shiur about Lag Baomer. We're going to connect it also with the Parashat Shavua. And I want to welcome everyone, all the new uh, guests and the new people who attend this class, and I'm so happy to see every week more people join the class. If you have any friend that you can recommend them to come and join us, to learn with us, to share, that's going to be amazing. And I'm sure that we can learn amazing tools to our life, especially in those days that we all facing challenges in a daily basis. Every week, every day, every hour, some of the days we climbing and we feel on the top of the mountain. And some of the days we crash on the floor and we don't want to wake up. Some of the days we have everything. We have Shlombait, we have Parnasa, we have money, our children are growing and, and, and behaving nice. We have everything, all the bills, pain. But some of the days, the credit card decline, problem with your kids, problem with your wife, problem with your husband, everything collapse in your life. And you don't know how to get up on your foot. You don't know how to continue. You don't know which way to choose and why this has happened to me. Why this has happened to us. Every time, one day you're here, one day you're here. We're like in a roller coaster. Roller coaster in our life. Why did Hashem make it in this way? And how can we elevate ourselves? How can we continue and move forward and choose to succeed and choose to be happy, choose to, to, to continue in a way that we can not just survive, we can make it even bigger and even stronger. And the reason why I choose this topic to, to, to talk tonight, because we are in the week of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. We're in the days of the 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva. That Rabbi Akiva lost 24,000 students in a period of time in 33 days from Pesach until Agba Omer. And Rabbi Akiva, as you know, he was the biggest Tana in the world, the biggest Tana that all the Torah that we have today, it's from Rabbi Akiva. That he was Amaret, he was a simple person who were, were he was against the Talmidei Chachamim, against rabbis, against Torah, he doesn't want to listen to anybody. He was hating Talmidei Chachamim. And then, over the years, he become Baal Tshuva and he choose to learn and he start from zero in the age of 40. In the age of 40, Rabbi Akiva choose to learn Aleph Bet. When he got married to Rachel, the daughter of Kalva Savua, <coughs> she said, I don't mind that you're going to learn the yeshiva. I don't want, mind that you're going and learn another year and another year and another year. I don't need you here. I don't need you to take care of the house. I don't need you to put the kids to sleep. I don't need you in the house. I want you to learn Torah. And he start from the beginning like a little child. He was learning Aleph Bet. He was learning Chumash. And until he become a rabbi, a big rabbi. And he opened the yeshiva, the biggest yeshiva in the world. If you have today the biggest yeshiva, you see yeshiva, near yeshiva in Israel, 6,000. You have in Lakewood, eight or 10,000 students. You can imagine 24,000 students. He was learning 12 years straight. When he came back home, after 12 years, today if you're going for 12 hours or 12 minutes, your wife going to call you 10 times. But, but, if Rabbi Akiva, he chose to learn Torah, and he went for 12 years. 
So Rabbi Akiva So Rabbi Akiva chose to learn Torah for 12 years straight. When he came back home, he heard his wife telling her neighbor that her neighbor was complaining about her husband. Look where your husband, he left you for 12 years. This is kind of relationship. This is a, this is a rabbi. Your husband is a rabbi. What kind of rabbi he left you for 12 years? She said to her, if it would have up to me, I would have let him to stay another 12 years. He didn't even come to say hello. He turned back and he went back to learn another 12 years. After tw 24 years of learning, he came back home. And with all the 24,000 students, all the city, everybody was talking, everybody was amazed to see the bigger Rabbi Akiva, he was a big Amaharetz, now he big. He became the big rabbi in the world that Moshe Rabbeinu, when Hashem showed Moshe Rabbeinu all the generations, he asked Hashem, why you give the Torah by me? You have to give the Torah by Rabbi Akiva. You have such a big rabbi like that. So how Rabbi Akiva, after he became such a big rabbi, he make a big decision in his life and he climbed so much for 24 years and he climbed up to the highest level to become the biggest rabbi in the world and he got the biggest yeshiva in the world now in 33 days he lost everything that's my rewards that's a sham that's why you give it to me are you serious even 10 students somebody lost, or one student you see somebody passed away, you become, uh, you, you lost your mind. Even one person, 20, 30, 50, 100, you can imagine if one of the keilot or, or, or big keilah or something like that, somebody passed away. How can you even get up? How can you even get up for this moment? that you see that all what you build collapsed in such a period of time, a month, you lost everything. What somebody else will, you will do? Somebody else, is, you know what? My business, I invest so much in my business. You know what, it's not for me. I'm gonna go learn by myself. I'm gonna go open a new business. You know what, Yana, I, I failed. Look how much I failed. Rabbi Akiva, he got the standard. You remember we talked about it last, last week. He used to say over and over again, what is the words that he used to say? You should love your fellow like you love yourself. Right? And all the students, no one, no one follow his, 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 his uh, agenda. Nobody follow him. Nobody respect each other. Why Rabbi, tell me the, Rabbi, the student Rabbi Akiva passed away? Because no one respect each other. So you biggest failure in the world. You don't know how to teach? You don't know how to influence some people? What kind of leader or what kind of rabbi you are? <laughs> Somebody else turn, turn around and said, you know what, it's not for me. I don't know how to teach. Maybe one person not follow you, 10 people not follow you, but all the yeshiva nobody follow you? What somebody else will be? How Rabbi Akiva pick up himself and he choose to continue and he choose to open the yeshiva again from the last students, the last students that, he, that remain. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Rabbi Meir Baal Anes, Rabbi Tarfon, Rabbi Lazar Ben Shamoa, and Rabbi Yossi. That's what I said in the Motsa Amud Bet. How Rabbi Akiva got the strength and the power to continue even he sees everything collapse. What is the message that taught Rabbi Akiva that drive him, that motivate him to continue? Even, even he lost everything and he have nothing to start with. 
You can imagine you, you wake up in the morning and you don't see nobody come to Minya, nobody come to Shiu, nobody. Like, what should I do here? Well, I'm paying rent for nothing. What are you going to do? You see all your keila, all your yeshiva, all your uh, business, or even you see your house collapsing. You know how many people lost their house? You know how many people lost their relationship? You know how many people lost their job for years? How can you can elevate yourself from this moment? How can you uh, continue when you see everything that you're building, you're losing everything? What is the message that we can learn from Rabbi Akiva and from Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai that's going to be Hilula tomorrow night? It's going to be the Lag Baomer, one of the nights of the Yeshua, the salvation. And we're all going to dance around the bonfire, the Medura, and we're going to sing Bar Yochai Nimshachta Ashrecha. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, after when he was learning so many years, he was such a big Talmud Chacham, such a big rabbi. The Romans was, 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 was chasing after him. They want to kill him because he was a uh, talk against the government. And somebody will say something about him that he's talking and gossiping on the government. They chase after him to kill him. He was in the cave for 13 years. You want to try for 13 hours to be in the cave? Nobody will survive. 13 hours. 13 days. <laughs> Who can survive 13 years? He was 12 years in the beginning. And then he went outside. He started to burn people. Because he realized that everybody working and doing their stuff. And he couldn't understand how people not learning Torah. And they're wasting their time uh, making money and, and working. And then the bat call said, you have to come back. No, 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 no. If you come in like that, outside and start shooting people, this is not the, the way of the Torah that I want. He, she told him, go back to the cave. He went to another year, and then he went outside a totally a different person. What is the secret of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai? That he was survived for 13 years. Somebody else who could have, could have said, Hashem, that's what, that, 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 that's not the Sahar? Are you serious? I could have gone and do business. I could have gone and do something else. No. I couldn't, I couldn't do something else, but I chose to learn. And even with all the, the circumstance around me, I never give up. And every day, and he put his, his son with them. And they, they covered their, themselves above uh, their body inside the sand. And they learned Torah. It's a Mesirut Nefesh. You can't even imagine how, how somebody can survive. Today, we have any kind of problem. One time, the credit card not going through. You lo lost your mind. <laughs> you see the check, $34 fee because the check won't bounce. Wow, what should I do? <laughs> Right? You have uh, somebody fight with you or, or against you or uh, got a problem with your wife. She's shooting on you like an RPG. You, you, <laughs> you don't know how to, what to do. You run, run, run away. Oh, you got a problem with your husband. You got a problem with your child. Somebody kick him out from the school. Somebody, so many problems that we got or we got a health problem when we got uh, a little bit of pain or we want to lose everything. We want to throw up everything. We don't want to wake up in the morning. We, we stand depressed, right? How many times? One time we are high, we succeed, we have everything. One time, you know what? Yallah, zavotcha, forget about it. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want it anymore. What should I stay in this kind of relationship? What should I stay in this business? What should I stay in this industry? industry uh, um, um, what should I stay? And continue if I see that every time, whatever I do, I fail. Whatever I try, I fail. And it's not working. It's not working. I don't see result. I don't see any movement. I don't see any progress. What should I do? I try so many times with my husband. He's a cuckoo. He's a cuckoo. Right? Leave me alone. Let me, let me live my life. Let me continue. 
I don't want to continue this kind of relationship. Right? What should I do? Or I got a problem with my my wife. She's a cuckoo. Right? She's she's all the time shooting the RPG. But you don't get that you up you load the RPG with the <laughs> We load it all the time and she just shoot it up. Shoot it when you came when you came home. But you don't get I don't want any things that we got, we want to run away. We cannot accept any pain. We don't have any power to, 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 to continue when we got any problem around us. What's wrong with us? So of course, today our generation is so low, so sensitive. You say something to someone, he's, he's turned back and he left the community. Just say one word. What's wrong with you? Are you serious? <laughs> he's going to another school. You say something. Oh, he didn't even say, but he thought that you say. <laughs> he thought that you say, he burned your life. That's it. Or I'm not going to talk to you. Or you thought that you thought. Exactly. So today you say something to someone, you get in, in offended. Or you get offended by yourself because you're thinking what people, other think. You're getting, <laughs> analyzing what people think about me and you, you're dreaming and you're exaggerating and you're talking to yourself. You have a real conversation with yourself. What people think about, what, I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. I'm afraid to, to be alone. I'm afraid so many fears, so many problems, so many negative thoughts that we're going through, so many things that cause that we just want to disappear. We just want to run away. We just want to go somewhere Forget about it. I don't want to. I, somebody told me, I had, I had a couple uh, two months ago. I went to do Shlom Bait. Like, uh, fortunately, today we have uh, uh, a lot of problems with, uh, in relationships. Somebody told me, you know what? I don't care anything. Give my wife, my house, my business, everything I have. I'm going to start from zero. I don't want to see the kids. I don't want to see anybody. Just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. He was screaming. I said, well, well listen, you have a few houses. I don't care. I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to sleep in my parents' basement. But I don't want to see this woman anymore. I don't want to see this kid. I don't want to see this life. I don't want to see the friend. Nobody. Why? Because today, there's two things that can drive you and make you to make any decision in life. And if you have any problem today, you got to choose according to this power, for, forcing power. What is that? Pain and pleasure. Whatever you do today, whatever any kind of relationship or any kind of place that you're going, any kind of food that you eat, any kind of uh, any hour that you wake up, anything that you do, because what? You have a pleasure. Any things that you prevent to do, because it's painful. If you don't get up in the morning, if you don't want to do something, if you don't want to keep something, it's not a pleasure for me, it's a pain, right? It's painful. I'm not going to be in the place that I feel painful, right? I'm not going to be in the place that I'm suffering. I'm not going to be in the place that somebody insulted me and I feel uncomfortable. Our mind cannot handle it, so we run away. We're going to do everything that causes what? Pleasure. And we're going to prevent ourselves to get pain. We're avoiding pain. When I ask a couple, why you don't get divorced? If you're suffering, how much you suffer from one to ten? She said <laughs> eight or nine. 20. Why not getting getting divorced? Because getting divorced level of pain divorce. it's fourteen or fifteen. So she don't want to get divorced. When I ask someone, what make you get divorced right now? After three years that you're suffering, you already suffered three years ago. Why you make it right now? She said to me, the reason that I didn't get divorced until today, because the level of pain that I was suffering was eight inside the relationship. Outside the relationship, I'm going to suffer 14 or 15 by being alone. Nobody going to pay my bills. I'm not going to see my kids like I want. Uh, everybody will talk against me. So much pain. 
So why you decide to get divorced today? Because now the pain inside the relationship is 20. So, so, so enough, it's enough. So I'm ready to have this pain. This is a piece of cake right now. I don't care what people talk. I don't care I'm going to be alone. I'm going to be alone, but quiet. I'm not going to be in the place that I have expectation. I'm not going to be in the place that I have someone that not, not respect me. I'm not going to be in the place without love, without any, any, anything that I'm getting from my husband, right? So it's everything, it depends on pain and pleasure. The same thing, if somebody become Baal Tshuva, become Choser B'Tshuva, why, why, why you choose right now to keep Shabbat? Until today, he didn't keep Shabbat. Because he has so much pain in his secular world, he has no meaning, no any, anything spiritual, so he's choosing right now to keep Shabbat, to be Kambal Tshuva, that he get pleasure by being more religious. Right? So whatever you see, whatever you do in your life right now, whatever you eat, why most of the people who are doing diet, they're getting back after two or three months? Why? Because pizza is much more pleasure than to eat chasa. <laughs> To eat lettuce, right? I feel pain when I eat when I eat uh, lettuce like a rabbit, right? I don't want to eat that. I feel so much pain. What do you need to do to associate pleasure to the lettuce, to the healthy food, to associate pleasure to see yourself skinny, and then it can motivate you to 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 choose to do diet or to to eat uh, in a healthy style, right? Yeah. So anything that you do, it's whatever give you pleasure and whatever give you pain, you avoid in pain and you gain pleasure, right? So what are you supposed to do if you want to change something, you want to do something? Either you work on your relationship, get more pleasure and then have so much much more fun with your husband, with your spouse, with your wife, or do something about it with, in your business or whatever you want to do, or just to, to choose the path that you're going to have much more pleasure outside, so leave whatever you have right now and continue whatever you want to choose. What I'm saying that, I want to get the message from Rabbi Akiva, the three messages that he taught us how to get up on your foot when you see that everything collapsing. Everything collapsing. Everybody today, in those days, I don't know if you remember, when we were a kid, we used to collect wood and stuff for the bonfire. Osfim yeah. Krashim, right? How you say Krashim? Uh, wood. Sticks. 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 Ten by four. Okay? So, so we used to we used to collect so, man, so much wood in order to build a bonfire. And then in the night of Lag Baoma, we used to b burn it and dance around it, right? Why, what is the reason? Some of the Fashim said that the reason, because we kind of light the candle for Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai for his Ilula, for his Memorial Day. And also 24,000 candles become bonfire. So it's for the 24,000 students that stop and the same day to die. So we light in a big candle, big bonfire. But what is, what the, the message that I, I want to learn is the message, how can we get up when we fell on the Krashim, when we fell on the woods, when we, everything, whatever we got in life got burned, we have nothing left, only ashes around. You see the people that you trust being traded, the people that around you and against you, the, the, the partners, the people that, that still from you, people against you, talking against you, people put you down, people don't value, they don't give you your respect, you feel worthless, you feel so much being trained. How can, how, if somebody wants to get up, what is the message that you can tell him? We can learn from Abi Akiva three messages. And that's the messages that give Rabbi Akiva the power to continue and the power to choose to be whatever he is. Rabbi Akiva, Nebidrash said, 
How he become Baal Teshuvah, you know? One day, he was walking around the lake, and he saw something, something suspicious and something interesting. He realized there is a rock on the lake, and he saw a little drop of water making a hole inside the rock. One day, another drop, another drop, another drop, another drop, another drop, another drop. After a period of time, he saw that the drops making a hole inside the rock. He said, if the water make, the, the, the drop of water make the hole inside the rock, of course the Torah can make a hole in my, in my heart that he become like a stone, and then I can, I can do everything. By doing what? By, first of all, what is the secret? Why Rabbi Akiva, he's the only one who realized that. Everybody, everybody knows. If you're going to put uh, some water or, or any kind, kind of uh, drop inside, uh, on top of uh, anything, it can make the hole. How it can make it all? Why nobody realized that? Because people used to go by the lake, people see, people realize that the drop's going. And people know that the drop's making the hole. But if you ask people during the, 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 the weeks or during the month, if the first drop makes something, the second drop makes something, no. The 100, the 1,000, the 50,000, the 100,000. After so many, maybe... But no, we realize, he realized that every drop, it's a matter. Every drop matter, which means when you want to make a progress, when you want to build something, when you want to do something, you have to have three things. What is that? Consistency. First of all, consistency. consistency. But first of all, before the consistency, first of all, you have to choose the goal, to choose where you want to go to choose what you want to think, mm -hmm. to choose what you want to choose to go, right? To make a destination. This is the place that I want to go. I'm choosing to go there, and I'm going to go there no matter what. Nobody going to, pro to, to bother me. Nobody going to stop me, right? Nobody going to stop me. People can talk against you. People can put you down, people can be trade, people can steal from you, people can kick you all over the place. But you're never gonna give up. So somebody, somebody said, if you can run, run. If you can walk, walk. If you, can, if you cannot walk, crawl. But never stop. Always keep moving, keep moving. But the problem is that we, we losing our mind we're losing our hope, we're losing our future because we are scattered. We don't have a focus. We don't have a place that we we chasing in one place and we're choosing to go there all the way no matter what. Why? So he realized that. That when you have one goal and you go in consistency, you go in consistency every day, Every day, another drop, another drop, another, you wake up, another page, another alert, whatever you want to choose, want to be successful. Uh, I remember Tony Robbins said once, he said, whatever you want to be in life, whatever you want to choose to be in life, if you want to do something and become something, if you're going to do something for four hours every day for 10 years, you can be successful in any area, in any aspect, in anything in life, to be the, the, the best one. Four hours every day. You can learn Chinese, you can learn to be Olympia, uh, Olympic, uh, I don't know, whatever you want to be. Four hours in 10 years, be consistent. But in order to be consistent and to choose the goal, you have to have your why. The problem is, that we don't have the why, that's why we break, that's why we fell down, that's why we don't want to continue, that's why everything and anybody can put us down. 
Why are you doing what you're doing today? Ask yourself, why are you doing it? You want to make money for what? What is the reason you're choosing this business? What is the reason you choose this relationship? What is the reason you're choosing this path of life? If you don't have a meaning, if you don't have why, people said when I asked somebody, what is the key of success? You, you know the rule 20 and 80? What is the rule 20 and 80? 20% 20 of the world succeed, the rest will fail. No. But 20% but 20, 20 and 80%, when I ask someone, what is the key for success? Everybody said, everybody said that 80% you have to, to know you how. How I'm going to get it. Most of the people are thinking, how I'm going to get it? How I'm going to create? How I'm going to change my relationship? How I'm going to, how I'm going to be succeed in my business? How I'm going to make 10 or 20 or 30K a month? How I'm going to do that? How I'm going to build my own community? How I'm going to build my own business? How I'm going to be successful? How I'm going to be more happy? How I'm going to be more... You're wasting your time to ask yourself about the how instead of what? The why. 80% of succeeding in any, anything in life 80% is the why. And the why have seven levels. Let's say you ask yourself, why do I want to be succeed in this area of my life? What I want to make money? Because I want to, why I want to choose this business? Because I want to make money. Why I want to make money? Because I want to uh, uh, buy some stuff. I want to have a free, financial free. Why? Because that's uh, going to make me uh, relax and I'm going to have everything for my kids and my, and my wife and and. I have a beautiful life. But why? Because that's what I didn't get when I was a child. Why? Because I want to prove to my, my father that I'm, I, I made it and I'm, I'm the independent. Why? Because, so it goes, you ha when you have your why so strong, your how can it go very easily. The most of the people that get succeed in life, in anything, they didn't have no idea how they're going to go. You're going to see so many people around the world that they succeed in anything. They become multi-millionaire because they have the why. They have the meaning. So if I want to be succeeding, if I want to uh, prevent myself to fall down, when you have your why, you have your passion, nobody will break me down. This is what I'm about. That's who I am. It's important for me to be succeeded. I saw this week an interview with Elon Musk. Somebody asked him how you become the most rich person in the world in the last three years. And if you can see somebody make a chart, you can see how much money was worth in 1999. Only one hundred and sixty three million dollars. In 2005, he got uh, 360 million 2010 he got his first billion the last 10 years he becomes so successful that if you're gonna spend his money for the next 100 years you cannot spend so much money but he said he said you know how I become the most successful uh, in the world he said when he want to invest his money for the rocket ship. You know how many times he fell? When he, 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 he established the space, uh, space X? He said, I was willing to invest all my money, it's billions of dollars, and I don't care how much it's gonna cost. In the third time, after two times that he was fell, he said, I'm going to invest all my money and I don't care if I need to go back to my best man or my parents. I'm going to sleep on the floor. I'm going to do that because that's my life mission. And nobody will stop me. Only when you get to the point, when you, you want to be, like Tony Robbins said, if you want to be succeeding on the, on the island, you have to burn the boats. There's no plan B. There's nowhere to go. All the time you want to do something, you want to build something, but it's always... Listen, uh, <laughs> I have where to go. I'm going to have something on the side. I'm gonna... No, 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 no. If you want to be succeed in your relationship, there's no way outside. There's no way. 
Because if you're not going to do your job inside the relationship right now with this kind of husband, this kind of wife, you're not going to do the work and you work on your midot, your on your behavior, this is your tikkun, if you're not going to do it now, you're going to do it twice in the, in the second one. When your kid's going to grow up with another husband or another wife, and you're going to have my kids and your kids will pay with our kids, right? And you have so much balagan around, unless you're in an abusive relationship. I'm not saying every case, it's, it depends. But I'm saying, if you run away from your mission, if you run away from your, 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 your uh, things that you have to go through, it's going to catch you in another place when you need to learn the message until you're going to learn the message. So everybody want to run away because we don't know the why. Why I want to stay, why it's important for me to stay with this relationship, with this business, with this uh, 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 kind of uh, uh, anything that I want to be achieved or I want to be successful. Rabbi Akiva said, I'm going to invest my time and invest my life and change everything and I'm going to be succeeded. Even it's not, it didn't work out for 24,000. I see only failure. There is no such a thing, a failure, unless you learn the lesson. Because every failure that you do, every student, every uh, deal that you close, anything that you're going through, or any person that came against you, learned the message. But instead of blame others, what do you need to choose? What is the message for me? Blame yourself, not in a way that you're blaming yourself and your self-sabotage, in a place that you're taking your ownership, taking responsibility, I'm gonna make it happen. I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna fail. And if somebody been trained, if somebody wants to put you down or put you down or break you down on the floor, get up and choose to live your life and choose to, to be positive and choose to, to do it no matter why, because nobody is worth it. Nobody's worth your time when you self-pity yourself. This person, you know, the, sometimes we like it, honestly, right? Who like it? Raise your hand. Everybody like it, right? Like it. To cry to everyone. To cry to everyone, I'm so poor, I'm so miscanned, have a mercy on me. Yeah? But, but, but you should know that it's not worth it to waste your time in the past. So ask yourself if we learn from Rabbi Akiva to have a goal and to have a destination, what should I choose to be focused from today? These three questions you ask yourself, what are you focusing today? You focus in what you have and you focus in what you don't have in your life. Most of the people, if you ask them, most of the people focus in on what? What they don't have. That's why we're all stressful, or not happy, frustrated, and we're sad. This, this, right. Cut it off. Cut it off. Most of the people focus on what we don't have. Ask yourself a second question. What is your focus? On what you have control or what you don't have control? Most of the people focus on what they don't have control. What's going to happen with my shidu, with my future? The, the, uh, uh, or in the past, right? Or what's going to happen with the economy? What's going to happen with the that, with that? So many things around. But if I focus, choose to focus what I, I have control, I have control in that, I can do it, I can change myself, I can do better, I can stand on my foot. That's what I can yeah, focus. Move your feet. Move your feet. Move. If you cannot run, crawl. Yeah. Walk. Move. If you cannot walk, crawl. But do not, do not stop. Don't give up. Right? As long as you have your why, don't give up. And the third thing, ask yourself, if you focus on the past, what happened, what people did to me, what happened in the past, those people always pick up the phone, oh, you know, okay, okay. <laughs> Somebody told me, sometimes I call people, and nobody, you know those days that nobody answer you? <laughs> and you're so depressed, you just need one person to pick up the you phone. Just <laughs> you need somebody to pick up the phone. <laughs> nobody answer you, even your good friend. But somebody told me nobody is against you. Uh -huh. Just the word. Right? No, nobody, nobody is against you. Don't take it offended. Right? 
because nobody cares about your problems. Why? Half of the people happy that you have it, <laughs> and most <laughs> and some of the people. Some of the people, they don't care, and some of the people are happy that you have it, right? Or they're going through the same, but they don't want to... So, right, so that's why do not give up. Rabbi Akiva, the Gemara, in Yevamot Kuf Kafalev, the Gemara said a story about Rabban Gamliel and Rabbi Akiva. They went in the boat one time in the middle of the ocean. The boat was drawn... Rabban Gamliel, somehow, he got a lifeboat or something like that, and he, he saved himself. And he saw Rabbi Akiva disappear inside the wave, and he was crying so badly. He said, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva, I'm so sorry of your loss. After a couple of days, he saw him in the, in the, in the, in the Bet, Bet Midrash, in the Shiva back. I said, hi, how are you? I said, what are you doing here? How you survive? And he said these following words. He said, every gal, kol gal, every wave that wants to, to put me down, I was putting my head down and I let the gal, the wave above my hand. I never stood in front or face it or tried to, to, to resist the wave. Because they're going to smash me on the floor or put me down uh, for death. I'm going to put my head down and I let the wave go. Everything in life, remember, it's temporary. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever any pain, any financial problem, any kind of relationship problem, anything, it's temporary. It's temporary either to learn the message or, or to, to, to have tikkun for your... your, your your, your things that you have done before, but take ownership. Remember why you're here. Remember who you are, what you're all about. And remember that everything can be changed if you choose to be happy. If you choose, it's all about make the decision. I choose to be happy. No one and not anything in my circumstance would define who I am. I'm a happy person. I'm a rich person. I'm a good person. I'm going to stand on my foot. I'm never going to give up. I learned from Rabbi Akiva, every gal. Gal is a lag. The same thing, lag, ba'omer. Lag is Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the same thing. Whatever he, whatever he went through. He said, if that's what Hashem wants you to be in the cave, I'm going to make the lemonade from the lemon, the lemon, right? I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to learn, learn. I'm going to do something about it. So if you're in a situation right now, you have two options, or to cry, or to blame everybody in the world, to waste your time gossiping and talking and calling and, 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 and justify yourself and say everyone how you, you're so good and the other partner, the other people, they're all wrong, they're all bad, nobody cares about me, nobody there, people are bad, people, and have so many bad things to, to talk about everyone, or to choose no. I'm gonna be quiet, whatever happened, happened, Whatever I need to learn from it, I'm going to stand on my foot. I'm going to show everyone. Nobody will put me down when you know your value. Nobody will make you. You don't need to get validate. You don't need to get approved from your husband, from your wife, from the people around you. You don't need to get approved. As you, whatever you know that who you are, nobody can put you down. It doesn't matter how much money you have right now. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Nobody will put you down. And if you have waves... And we do have waves every day. Everybody here have waves, right? Some of the people drawing, some of the people fighting every day. Some of the people, we're all swimming the big oceans and the oceans are so big that we can't see the hope, can't see the future, we can't see what's going to happen. But only one thing that we can choose to be focused. A what? What is to be focused? To be focused, to live in the moment right now. To be happy right now. I have my breakfast. I pray this morning. Baruch Hashem. I have my husband still around me. I have my kids. I have a roof above me. I have food to eat. I have a little bit of money in my bank account. I can survive. I'm happy. Whatever it is, it's bonus. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to change it. But everything you, you learn from the message that you can see that nobody will break you down as long as you have your mission. 
Rabbi Akiva, when he had his mission, his life mission, he said, nobody, even my yeshiva is collapsing. I don't see any hope. I don't see anybody around. Eh. He's looking for Minyan. He didn't have a Minyan even. He went and he heard there is five students in, in south, in Eretz Israel, Badarom. He went there. He said, I'm going to choose you to, to, to open a new yeshiva and I'm going to choose to, to leave. I'm going to choose to continue. I'm going to choose to, to do it because that's what I'm all about. But nobody, any circumstance, will define who I am. Right? Sometimes we, we think, ah, look, look whatever I have around me. Look, that's what I am. I need to go from this, this place. And you, you see, so many years I didn't succeed. So many years I'm still broke. <laughs> so many years. So I, I'm not the type of person that, no, don't, don't make any, any conclusion. It doesn't matter, you know. You know how many people fell and fell and fell and fell? But they never stopped. They never stop. That's what Hashem wants from us, to, to continue and to, to put our head under the waves. And that's what the Gemara said, the Rabbi Akiva. We have four people that went inside the heaven, the highest level in the heaven. Four people in the Pardes, the Gemara said. Right. Rabbi Elisha ben Avuya, ben Azai, and Rabbi Akiva is the only one who get up and he went out Beshalom. Nothing happened to Rabbi Akiva. And everybody asks how Rabbi Akiva, nothing happened to him. And he always know how to get out in his situations in the better life, in the better situation. You know what Rabbi Akiva said? Rabbi Akiva said, whatever I got in life, I know whatever, I'm not taking anything a credit for myself. It's people, people, yeah. So Wait. People, what happened to people? Let's say a person get a job. After two or three years, he get another, uh, elevate his position in the job. Let's say in the bank or or in the, in the company, another position, and, and then he become a manager. He become now he walking only with tie and a nice suit, and and then after a couple of years, he got fired. From this place, he went so down and he's so broken and he, could, he couldn't even imagine how, how I'm going to survive, right? Well, when a person know that when he was there over here and he was there over here, it doesn't matter. Whatever he got is from Hashem. It's not for me. I'm not, I'm not changing anything in my feeling that I feel like above or I feel I'm in the hands of Hashem. That's what David Melech said. Hashem lo gava libi ve lo ramu elai ve lo elachti be gedolot u beneflaot b'meni. The day that David Amelech, after 28 years that he was running in a cave in, in, in the desert, in the forest, and he was fighting with bears and lions. In the middle of the day, somebody called him, Shmuel Navi, and he said, Hashem choose you to be the king of Israel. <laughs> what, what? What? What are you talking about? Oh, okay. And when he was pouring the oil to make him a king, the oil goes from the, the juggle of oil psh, by, by himself, jump on his face to show that he's the real one who's going to be the king of Israel. He, the Gemaras, David Amalek right away said, Hashem lo gava li lo ramu enai. He didn't even lift his eyes and it feel like above or something changed. Doesn't matter where I am. Whatever you go through, when you know that Hashem has put you there and we have nothing without Hashem. So when people think that they gain something, I build my business in 10 fingers, right? You know, those people, I build my family, I build this relationship, I did that, I did that. When they get the heat, when the wave come, they collapse and they destroy it. When a person knows, whatever you see here, it's a miracle. Oh, what do you see here? All the people here, it's a miracle, right? It's not me. It's Hashem brought you here. Hashem built this place. Hashem created this place. Hashem. So whatever you're going through, whatever you have right now, any money, business, everything can be temporary. As long as you're not, if you're not grateful, if you're not thankful what you have today, 
the people that are around you today, nobody promised you they're gonna be tomorrow. The money that you have today, the business that you have today, the health that you have today. So as long as you don't complain, don't complain what you have today because it could be worse. You know what people going through? You never know what people are going through. So always be thankful and choose to be happy. Choose to see the good in every situation. That's Rabbi Akiva. He choose to see the good. I have five people that I can teach, even for one person. That's my mission, it's to teach, it's to guide, and to, to, to do something in my life. That's my mission. That's what I'm all about. Everything, it's, 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 it doesn't matter. That's why Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai will light the candle, will make a burn, burn fire. Instead of to fell down from the wood, we're making a light. We're making a something big, we're dancing. And this is the days of salvation. Of the days of salvation, and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai promised whoever dance lichvodi and light the candle in Nishmat Rabbi Shimon Baruchai. This is the time that you throw candles to the, 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 the Medura and to ask for Rabbi Shimon Baruchai for Zivugim. There is a lot of zgulot. I'm going to post it uh, later in, in the WhatsApp group. A lot of zgulot for Shiduchin, for Zivugim, for uh, to buy a house because Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon Baruchai is the only one that were, was homeless all the time. He couldn't be in one place. So he promised. Whoever ask, whoever asking Lag Baomer to buy a house, I'm telling you, it's working. Oh. I'm really? telling you, it's working. Yes. Lag Baomer to ask, to build, and to buy a house. Enough with the rent. Enough with the rent. Nobody who is supposed to be in the rent. You have to. I'm gonna buy my own house. I'm gonna make it happen. I'm gonna change myself. I'm gonna believe in myself. Doesn't matter if I'm gonna be in the cave. Doesn't matter if I'm gonna be down. I'm gonna be uh, whatever. Nobody will destroy me. Nobody will put me down. Nobody uh, worth it. That's what we have in this week parasha. In parashat emo, in the last week parasha, and this week parasha parashat behar. Parashat emo, we have something beautiful. We have few, uh, five more minutes. I'm, I'm gonna share with you what we have in the parasha. The Torah said. Rashi said, you have to, the Torah said that you have to commend the Kohanim, right? You have to commend them about the restriction who those people can be Tameh, close to them when they die, and who is the one that they cannot be Tameh, and he cannot go to any funeral. The Kohen Gadol cannot be in any funeral. The Kohen Yot, he can be he can be around his seven relatives. What about his mother? Right? So, mm. Rashi said something beautiful. Rashi said, why the Torah said, Emor ve'amarta? Say, and then tell them, or say to them. Why twice? Rashi said, Razir gdolim, Razir gdolim al which means, if you talk in Hebrew, what is that lazir gdolim alaktanim? It's not enough just to know the halacha for yourself as you coin. Or you have to teach your children not to be around dead people or ne next to the cemetery. Right? This is the pshat. But I thought something beautiful. What is lazir gdolim alaktanim? Some of the moments in life, we have moments that we ktanim, we are small. Moments that we have nothing, we barely have money to eat, we barely have anything that around us, we have no people, no friends, no family, we feel so lonely, we feel so depressed. Even we have people, we have things, we feel so depressed, so down. How can I survive in those moments? What should I do in those moments? Lazir gdolim alaktanim. Lazir, which means milashon zohar. Light. Zohar lights. To light the small moments with the big moments. Listen to that. I went to Tony Robbins seminar once. And he make a process of such an amazing and very powerful process. What was that? He said, in any situation in life that you're going through, depression, you don't want to wake up, nobody answers, you know, those moments that you want to 
just shut down the everything. He said, everything that you want to get in life and choose and to move on, it's all depending on your state. What does this state mean? State, which means state of mind of happiness, state of, 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 of uh, um, uh, it, it's called peak state. Peak state, which means that you're strong, that you you're feel certainty, you feel uh, uh, good about yourself, right? When you want to do something in life, it's not about if you can or you cannot. It depends, everything that you want to achieve in life, it depends on your state. If I'm going to come to you, when you're in a good state, I'm going to have a big, uh, big meal, big sauda, and I have a nice music, right? A big paitan, yalla, ya habibi, whatever, whatever, any music you like, right? Maybe habibi, it's a little bit Arabic, but, but any music you like, or any, a party. Everybody dancing, everybody moving, everybody. Now I said, Rabotai, everybody, who wants to invest with me in this uh, place? Who wants to donate? Who wants to do something? Yeah, I want. I want. Everybody raise their hand. Everybody happy. Everybody wants to do together. They, they, they're going to believe in this uh, project. They're going to believe in you. They, right? Because they're in a good state. When you're in a bad state, it's called shitty state. Right? It's, excuse me. But it's a bad state, which means that everything is low, everything is eh, whatever, or you so down, if I'm gonna tell you, there's a building over here, half, 50%, eh, all the buildings are so bad. All the people in Florida are so lazy. This is the worst place in the world. <laughs> Hollywood people, forget about them, right? <laughs> you so, whatever I'm gonna tell you to do, you so negative, you don't want to do anything. Everything looks so big and impossible to achieve. Why? Because you're in a bad state. Right? Bad state, which means like that. What are you supposed to do? How can you change your state? First of all, by changing your focus. What I said. Focus what you have. Focus on what you think that you have control. Focus on the moment. Not focus on the past and the future. By changing your physiology. Jump. Start to jump. Five minutes, put, put some music. Yes, make a move. Yes, make a move. Whoever know what I'm talking about, and Tony Robbins know that everybody jumping, jumping, half an hour jumping. Whatever he tells you, if he tells you that you're going to be a millionaire, you're going to believe it. Yes, you're going to make it. You're going to change your relationship. It's, it's, it's possible. You're going to good state. Physiology, your language. Language which means that you're talking good, talking positive. It's gonna be good. Everything is good. Instead of to pick up the phone, yeah, Rabbi, I'm so bad, I'm so depressed. All my life is going to, you know. No, change your language. Everything is great. You have two dollars in your bank account. Everything is great. Everything. Change your language. Talk good. You will attract good. You're gonna see good. You're gonna change your state. So, so how can you change your state? So he, he asked for everyone to get up and everybody stood up and he said, put your hand in your heart and now remember the three moments in your life that you're grateful to Hashem, whatever happened to you. So if you want to do it now, you can do it now. Close your eyes and think about the, the first moment, the happiest moment that Hashem saved you, that Hashem give you money, Hashem give you a relationship, Hashem give you the first child, the first job, the first uh, anything that you ask for, and you see that Hashem is with you, you feel the blessing from Hashem, you feel everything going through in this, uh, you feel love from your people, from your loved one, uh, the first uh, uh, friends that you, uh, that you have. Think about this moment and be there and experience there and think about the present and the guidance and the, 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 the abundance from, from God upon you. Think about it and hold it. Now think about the second moment. Second moment that is so grateful how you got this job and how you got the first child, got married or the, the moment that you got divorced maybe or the moments that... <laughs> Or the, the moments that you, you, 
you got so much money or the moment that you got released from a horrible situation. Remember this moment and be there and experience there and be grateful and say thank you, Hashem. Thank you, God. Thank you. This moment. And then think about the third moment. Th third moment that you're so grateful to Hashem that you're so lucky to have this life. You're so lucky to be to do, uh, uh, to get so much around you, so much friends, so much uh, people, uh, whatever you want, you want to think about, this is the third moment. So we went to this process for 10 or 15 or 20 minutes, and everybody, of course, cried, he did it in very loud music. And then he said, when, you th when you're grateful in your life, when you're going through any kind of her horrible time in your life right now, you sad, you feel lonely, feel so not not appreciative you so that you, you feel so down you feel that nobody loves you there's no nobody cares about you when you feel so bad this is called ktanim this is a called a, a, a moment that you small moments it's called katnin katnut demokhin katnut demokhin which means that you so down that that you, you, you even ask yourself, where is Hashem? Where is God? Like, what's going on? Maybe Hashem don't love me. Maybe Hashem forget about me. Maybe Hashem punish me. Right? Think about in this moment that you feel so bad, do this, experience, this, this exercise of thinking about the good moments. This is Lazir Gdolim Alaktanim. You're making the light from the big moments, from the good moments, on the Small moments. You understand what I'm saying? It's very powerful. La zir gdolim alaktanim, which means that you get in the, the good moments, the big moments, the, the best moments of your life. Of right now, you're going through a horrible relationship. Look at the album and the good times that you have with your husband. How he took care of you, how he bought you the first flower, how he traveled you, how he paid so much money. How he make you the dinner? How it he make you surprise? How but but it's like that. It is like that. It's like that. When I sit with people, so I'm I'm going through the first year that they were in be together. Remember the why? Why in the first time he choose this person? Is so bad that you want to leave him like that? She's so bad that you want to left your wife? You want to left your kids like that? You want to grow up and continue in life without uh, uh, one of the the, the parents? So think about the good moments. So this is Lazir Gdolim. You're making the lights from the big moments on the lights moment. So this is the, the, the time that in the small moments, you can get the strength to go through these small moments. I remember I told you, I have a friend that he got in the jail uh, three weeks ago. What was him? He got released uh, two days ago. And he was there for a month. And during the Passover in Washington, Seattle, it was a big story. I asked him, how you survive? He was a Shiva boy. He never went to any kind of like stuff like that. He said all the time in this moment that I was in the jail, nobody around, feels so abundant, so bad. He think about the good moments in his life. He think about how Hashem love him and how Hashem put him in this place. He, and remember what's going to happen when he get out. He, he has something in, in mind because whatever you are, it's whatever your thoughts are. If you think negative, everything, if you're going to get a new relationship or a new job or a new place, everything is going to be negative. But if you think positive, every, everything could be changed if you give it a chance. So you're taking this moment and you're not losing hope. Because Parashat Behar, it's talking about the Shemitah. Shemitah, which means when, when you let the land shut down when you land under your knee goes away you know it when somebody will take the land or the carpet under your you 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 you'll feel that you're not stable that's what happened to us when we're not stable that's what like Baumer, and that's what those days for in parashat beha when the karka the land goes under our knee when we we, we kind of lose everything we kind of uh, uh, going, uh, uh, we're losing our mind. But the message is never give up. 
always keep moving, keep continue, keep believing, and keep whatever the, the, the whatever you need to do, because it's all depending on you. Take the full ownership, full responsibility and accountability. Nobody, nobody will help you. Nobody will uh, will 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 take care of you unless you're gonna choose to be happy and choose to get up on your foot and believe in yourself, believe in Hashem, and and have in mind the first why and remember the good things that you have today and you had in the past when you're grateful and you're thankful to Hashem in order to open the gates in the heaven only when you say thank you when you're appreciative as other Hashem good luck and share the Quran about Tzlacha Amen Amen Bezad Hashem. I'll see you all in next Tuesday. Bezad Hashem. And bring your friends. And everybody. Bezad Hashem. More than welcome to join us. Thank you all for coming. For sponsoring. Whoever wants to sponsor the next you. Let me know. Bezad Hashem. You can have two sponsors.